Good Friday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Nonick with a quick update as to what's going on with the forecast into the rest of the day today. Hot and humid and also looking for the potential of some stronger weather heading our direction as we head into later on tonight. Could be the possibility of some damaging winds, large hail, and unfortunately we cannot rule out the possibility of some isolated tornadoes into portions of the Mid-South as we go into late this evening. Storm Prediction Center should be issuing its updated forecast at just about any time. Time, and we hope to bring that to you as soon as it's updated here, probably within the next few minutes. So we'll bring that to you here in just a little bit. If you've never been here before, again, please drop your location and your weather reports into the comments section. We'd love to see more about where you're checking in from and give us an idea. Do some amateur meteorology and let us know a little bit more about what the weather is in your location. If you got anything in the way of weather reports, rain gauge from last night, high temperature, low temperature, anything like that, please let us know a little bit more about what you're seeing out there for this morning and then also again keep an eye on what's going on with the weather forecast pictures out there if you got any pictures we'd love to see them we don't have any to show right now but we'll give you yet again an opportunity to send some more of those in coming up throughout the rest of the next couple days and right on in through the weekend so stay tuned for more on that in just a little while if you got any questions about the forecast drop them into the comments section we'll do our best to answer as many of them as we can in just a little bit if you can't stick around for the whole update of weather overtime forecast is scrolling by in the red bar at the bottom of your screen it's also available here at wrhg.com slash weather where you can get the 7 to 10 day forecast and of course you can contact me directly at austin.onic at wrhg.com. Let's get started again with just a basic update of the forecast for the next several hours. Hot and humid all the way throughout the course of the rest of the morning and as we get into this afternoon that's where we start to see the potential of more thunderstorms developing and the heaviest weather should be saving itself for right around sunset tonight. So if you have any outdoor plans, outdoor athletic events, anything in the way of yard work going on, whatever you've got planned, you're going to need to, again, have an indoor plan ready to go just to be on the safe side because we may see the potential of some stronger weather heading our way into dinner time and afterwards, but we'll time that out for you coming up here in just a little bit. Hopefully this will cool you off a little bit anyway. We brought out our autumn countdown clock to give you an idea as to how much longer we've got until the change of seasons into and around the area. So 64 days, 12 hours, and about 50 minutes. Autumn officially begins Saturday, September 22nd. Doesn't mean it's going to be any cooler, though, so we'll be watching out for any cooler weather we can have uh, into and around the area. Adele Bonnewell, hope I'm saying that right. What's the weather supposed to be here in Lexington? About as hot as it is into the rest of the Mid-South. We'll take a look at the forecast numbers coming up here in just a little bit. Thanks a lot to everybody into checking in for this morning. And again, if you have anything in the way of weather reports into and around the area, please drop them into the comments section. We'd love to see what the weather is like in your location. Put that thermometer outside the kitchen window to some good use. Reminding you, of course, always that it could always be worse. High temperature in Memphis yesterday was only 92 degrees, but the national high temperature, Death Valley, California, for the number of days running, 120 degrees out that direction, where, of course, it was naturally a dry heat, but that doesn't really do us any good in trying to cool us off here anytime soon. As of right now, good view from the airport, a little hazy out there as people get going on the roadways and the sky ways. So far reporting sunny skies at Memphis International Airport and the green icon indicating delays of 15 minutes or less, so not seeing too much of anything in the way of major problems. Karen Boyle's Shields, some rain in the Austin, Texas area. Yeah, I've got a couple of friends of mine from high school who live around that area, and they say it's getting a little bit dry into that area for right now. Michael Wilson, Memphis native, but in Metro Chicago. Welcome to the show. Severe weather chances today? Yes, you do have some up in that area of Lake Michigan, so uh, please be cautious up that direction as well for today. Uh, welcome to everybody else who's joining us. 77 in Dyer and sunny skies, Gibson County, Judy Baker. Thank you very much for that weather report. So far, no major delays showing up across the continental United States on the major and connecting airports. All this information available on your computer system. Just go to fly.faa.gov, or you can get that information. Scroll down to the bottom of the page at our wreg.com slash weather section. A few of our webcams around the area, well, ours, we collect them in and around so we can show them to you, but this one belongs to the University of Mississippi, the track and field camera, a few joggers and strollers out earlier before the sun rose, getting a little hotter in Oxford, Mississippi. Back into 
central Memphis, Rhodes College, a few clouds drifting on through with plenty of sunshine. Uh, the view from Olive Branch, Mississippi. Thank you very much, former mayor, current meteorologist Sam Reichert for this view. Looking back toward the northwest, if I'm not mistaken, and again, a few clouds drifting through the northwest tip of Mississippi. This is going to be an area you're going to want to avoid very well this weekend as all of this area is basically going to be shut down thanks to the MemFix 4 project going on. So if you're planning on traveling through I-240 in Poplar, you're going to get rerouted at various locations. It's going to be very difficult to get through here. So if you have to be traveling through here, you may want to think about Park Avenue, Quince, Shady Grove, and back up. Is Corey, is Walnut Grove going to be open this weekend? Okay, yeah, Walnut Grove is going to be open so you can use... Shady Grove Park in Quince. Okay, Corey Ventura, traffic remotely from that side of the studio. Thank you very much for checking in there. So again, please use caution if you're going to be going anywhere near this location this weekend and plan ahead for delays. Anything around this location south of the flyover or north of Mount Moriah on 240 could be, again, some major delays taking place at this location. 385 around Memphis, that would be a best alternate route going back to I-240 just to be on the safe side there. Currently on Storm Tracker 3S radar, we're looking for anything in the way of showers east of the Mississippi River. West of the Mississippi, we again have some activity taking place here, but we don't have, again, a lot going on at least just yet. We're looking at some thunderstorms that have regenerated nicely over the Arkansas-Missouri border, and that's dropping to the southeast. Most of this should miss the area, but some of this might stray down to around Forest City and St. Francis County. Leftover thunderstorms here, now just really nothing more than some light scattered showers taking place over portions of northeastern Arkansas, north of I-40, and not seeing any regeneration from these, but again, we'll need to watch that very carefully, and if anything turns severe, we'll let you know about that. The big weather story for the day is, of course, the heat. This is where we're going to be seeing, again, the possibility of major problems out there. Now, in the orange-shaded categories, that's a heat advisory from Dyersburg to Corinth to Oxford, Holly Springs, Bolivar, Jackson. That's where we're going to be seeing heat index temperatures of around 105 degrees today. Now, in the excessive heat warning areas from northwest Mississippi, east Arkansas, small portion of southwest Tennessee, including the metro area, heat index temperatures could be around or over 108 degrees. So we're talking about some dangerously hot weather if you're going to be doing anything, working or exercising, anything doing strenuous activity outdoors for long periods of time. You're going to need to pace yourself, let yourself acclimatize, get back into the cool weather of air conditioning or the shade, get out of that direct sun, drink back the water, your body sweats away. If you want some heat tips and what to look for in the way of heat injuries, again, right here at WREG.com slash weather will be your best bet. It already feels like 90 degrees today, already 92 at U of M Earth Sciences on live real-time WeatherNet 3. Air temperatures here combine this with the humidity, and this is what it feels like out there. So Cross County High School with the clouds and the rainfall moving in, not quite as bad. More sunshine here, so we're getting that direct heating going on, and we're looking for some, again, very warm conditions into around portions of the Mid-South right now with heat index temperatures going upwards into around the lower 90s across much of the area. So we're looking at some pretty steamy conditions out there already, and we'll continue to monitor that throughout the rest of the day as well. All right, let's run the numbers and show you what we've got going on throughout the rest of the morning through News Channel 3 Live at 9. Not that much going on, not expecting to see too much anyway. It's going to be this afternoon after lunchtime into and around the area, northern parts of the viewing area first, and then as we get into this afternoon and this evening, the possibility of thunderstorms is going to start to sink farther down to the south, right along I-40 as we go towards sunset right after dinner time, and then getting a little stronger as we head toward about News Channel 3 at 10. So again, outdoor activities need to monitor this very carefully. We could see some watches issued by the Storm Prediction Center anytime in the next couple of hours, depending on how this decides to start bubbling up in the app. Atmosphere. So, again, something to think about there. Uh, Bubba Chris Atkinson drinking water to keep up. Again, that's a yeah, going to need a lot of water out there to make sure you're going to be pushing yourself too hard. Uh, Clarksdale in this in the excessive heat. Sandra Coleman, yes, that is uh, correct. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Leanne Adams, will we get some storms today? 
more like this afternoon into this evening, but better chances of them, yes, and there will be the possibility of them into the rest of the next couple of days, getting rid of the chances of thunderstorms out there. Uh, Sandra Coleman, if you have to be out, make sure you get a small cooler and put some water on ice. Very good idea. And whatever you do, again, make certain your pets, if they're outdoors, have enough water and adequate shelter. They're wearing the fur coats. You're not. So please keep that in mind there. Uh, Siomo Flat Linacy. Flat linacy. I can't. I hope I'm saying that fairly right. Uh, is it a good day to take the kids swimming? Yes, a very good day to take the kids swimming. But again, remember if you can see lightning or hear thunder, time to get out of the pool and back indoors again, as the possibility of lightning gets set up across the area. Those lifeguards at the pool are not trying to annoy you. They're trying to save your life. So again, if they tell you to get out of the pool because there's lightning nearby. There's a good reason for that. So safety first, safety always. Make certain, again, that everybody is in, again, a safe place when that lightning starts coming around out there. Welcome to everybody joining the show at this point in time. Through tonight and into tomorrow morning, chances of showers and thunderstorms will remain into the area as we go into very early Saturday morning. And then by about the time News Channel 3 uh, daybreak tomorrow is over with, that should do it for the chances of showers and thunderstorms out there. Now, if this, hang on a second, okay, if this works, uh, this should be the updated forecast information. It looks like that it is uh, for right now, and it looks like we do not have too much of anything that has really changed on this. Now, the main threat at this time is in this category here. That's a moderate threat of severe weather. That's a pretty decent possibility of severe weather, but that's just outside the viewing area into around northern middle Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, and all the way back up into portions of Ohio. That's going to be the main target zone for later on this afternoon into this evening. Now, this shade of kind of yellowish orange, that's an enhanced risk. That, again, is not the primary target zone, but it does show an, a good chance of severe weather for basically all of the News Channel 3 viewing area. Now, down around, say, south of Tunica, Clarksdale, Helena, West Helena, there is a slight risk. That's a lesser possibility of severe weather. But once again, it is still a possibility. So again, later this afternoon into this evening, developing back to our north and moving into the Mid-South towards sunset tonight and into overnight, that's where we see the main potential of severe weather. What are we looking for? Main threat's going to be damaging winds and large hail. We cannot rule out the possibility of isolated tornadoes. It may be fairly low at this time frame, at this forecast, but it could be, again, increasing later on. It's not zero. It's kind of a non-zero potential, but again, it does have the potential of happening. So anywhere in the Mid-South later this afternoon in this evening, you stand that risk of severe weather. If you're traveling to, say, Nashville, back up to around portions of Murray, uh, Paducah, Lexington, you're going to be seeing a much better chance of severe weather. Could be activity like what we saw in portions of Iowa last night. National Weather Service in Des Moines is going to be doing storm surveys today. We'll let you know what they find out coming up later on News Channel 3. So stay tuned for more on that as we keep you updated. Okay, rest of the forecast. Very hot out there. Temperatures back in the mid-90s today. Better chances of severe weather into around dinner time, into later on tonight. And again, looking at less chances of showers and thunderstorms, but still possible early tomorrow into the afternoon. Then we get rid of the chances of showers and thunderstorms toward about Sunday. So the entire weekend doesn't look like a washout, but if you're outdoors tomorrow, I would watch very carefully again to see what's in your area. So if you have to get back indoors again, you can. Throughout the rest of the next several days, temperatures will kind of, I hate to say, get cooler. We have a cold front coming through round about, again, Saturday into Sunday. So you're saying, okay, well, where are the 60s, where are the 70s? Not that strong of a cold front. It'd be nice, but that's not going to be happening. We'll be getting back closer to normal. So for this time of the year, lower 90s, that's not bad. If we're not going to be totally cooled off, at least we're not going to be blistering hot in the triple digits either. So right now, that's looking a little bit better. More chances of showers and thunderstorms into the middle to end part of next week. So again, as of right now, looking at possible warmer numbers coming up as we run out of July and head into August, heading into the next 10 days or so, somewhere in there at this point in time. 
Uh, let's see, Lisa Cannon Mergel. So, guess I better get on, get going on the grass this morning. Yeah, if you have any outdoor again lawn care plans, earlier is going to be a lot better rather than later because that's where we'll see the best possibility of thunderstorms into and around the area as we head into around the rest of the mid south. Again, coming up over the next several days, so looking at better potential there into the next few days. Now, through again the rest of the afternoon into this evening. That's where we'll be monitoring for the potential of severe weather out there. We don't see a lot going on again immediately. There's no watches. There's no warnings in effect at about 819 this morning, according to the clock over there. So, so far looking okay, but at any point in time in the next few hours, we could be looking at that potential of more showers and thunderstorms developing and the potential of severe weather. So that's something we're going to keep you updated on. Stay tuned to our main website, to all of our social media pages, and of course online and on air. We'll keep you updated as to what goes on into and around the Mid-South area. If you see anything happening with severe weather and you can get pictures of it, that's great. You can send it to us by Facebook, Twitter, or emailing it to our website. We'll again have those numbers posted during severe weather coverage if it becomes necessary. But please remember, do not risk your life for a piece of video or for a picture. It is absolutely not worth it. Make sure you can get your pictures or your video from a safe location. Leave the storm chasing to the experts. Don't go out after stuff like that, but get ready now for the potential of some stronger storms coming our direction as we go throughout the course of the next couple of days. We'll keep you an idea on that one. Justin Hodge, how much rain are we expected to get around Somerville? Uh, as of right now, it looks like maybe about a half an inch to an inch with rain showers coming on through. With the more intense thunderstorms, we could see again the potential of some heavier amounts of rainfall maybe two to four inches on some locations, and that could trigger some flash flooding. So that could happen just about any place across the Mid-South, not just around Somerville. So again, please keep that in mind if you're going to be outdoors uh, into and around the area. Uh, again, we'll keep you updated on that potential and some heavier amounts of rainfall here and there. Janie O'Kelly from Bentonville, Arkansas, from my former uh, stomping grounds over there with KFSM Channel 5. Hot today here, too. I'll bet it does sound... Uh, a little bit steamy over there as well. I got to pop off here and get ready for our updates coming up at 825. So stay tuned for more on that. And we'll have a late morning edition of our weather blog coming up at about 1030 once we get done recording all of our updates in the studio that will air throughout the rest of the weekend. Again, questions, concerns, comments, let me know at austin.onic at wrig.com. And keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for the latest weather information throughout the rest of the day. Tim and Jim will have your forecast updates into later on tonight. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, from the WREG-TV News Channel 3 studios. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for the early morning edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime, and stick around for a lot more information coming up with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the day. Thanks for joining us.